Hello there, YouTube. Today, I want to talk about how conservatives don't care about you. I'm going to talk about some common conservative talking points and why it shows a disdain for some people. And also, I'll use the Finnish government, previous government, that is, that was right-leaning and conservative in its values and some of the practices that they put into place and how they did not cater to most people. So, let's get started then. Shall we? Let's define conservatism. I want to define it first so that we're all talking of the same term here, because if I don't define it, then we might be speaking past each other here. So, the Oxford Dictionary defines conservatism as a commitment to traditional values and ideas with opposition to change or innovation, and conserving, you know, conservatism, you conserve the, the previous ways or the old ways. Or the holding of sorry, the holding of political views that favor free enterprise, private ownership, and socially traditional ideas. So when I say conservative, that's what I mean. So one of the things I very often see conservative spouse a spouse is a like individual responsibility when it comes to systemic issues like racism or poverty sexism they all kind of offer a way of like well you need to figure that thing out you know if you're impoverished because you grew up um in a neighborhood that is impoverished then you just need to work hard and get out of there you just need to do that just lift yourself up by your bootstraps which I love when people use that because the original meaning of that saying was to point out how ridiculous, like, that, that the phrase was a used as a way of saying, like, it's not possible to do that because lifting yourself up by your bootstraps is not possible. It's an impossible task. But yes, so they, so I see conservatives often espouse this individualistic solution to systemic problems, and I don't think it's, it's very helpful i mean yes saying to someone you know you need to work on the issues that you have i don't think it's a bad thing in and of itself but when we talk about systemic issues like racism poverty sexism etc simple simply you know people individuals doing a little bit better doesn't really fix the issue like the let's say in the u.s like the the consequences of redlining for example in the u.s has left many black generations and families impoverished and left them with less opportunities. And because they are in impoverished areas, their schooling gets less funding because in the US, schooling, school funding is tied to property taxing. So then you can see this systemic racism here has generational impact. So someone just, you know, making better decisions for themselves is not really a way to fix that problem. That, in this example, black people have not had the chance to build generational wealth like white people have, which is not to say that all white people are rich, of course, but it's to say that white people have had a chance for a longer time to build intergenerational wealth, which black people have not. So to say to black people just work hard is not really the solution to that systemic issue. Or sexism, let's say, you know, if you women being treated poorly in certain industries, for example, the tech industry, women get a lot of sexism and shit, or don't get promoted when when their male colleagues might get promoted. So things like that make it hard, harder for women to progress in those industries. So just telling them to work hard doesn't take that into account, and which is why we need more systemic solutions rather than just telling people to you know, figure it out. And that, of course, speaks to the whole idea that you want to conserve the current system, you know? You don't want it to change. So you just tell individuals to kind of do stuff, but you don't have to change anything. And conservatives often also demand that working people make cuts, you know? We're living through tough times now, so people are going to have to make some sacrifices. Everyone's going to have to make some sacrifices here, all right? 
and at the same time, they will give big companies tax cuts. So the regular people will have to make sacrifices, their taxes will get raised, funding from their from programs that they need, like welfare, education, medical care, those are cut. Those have to be cut. But big companies, they're taxing up. I mean low, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Bring that down. Because if they have more money, uh, then that money will magically make its way to everyone else, which doesn't work. It hasn't, hasn't worked. Doesn't work. And then, of course, stuff like the military in the U.S., like less funding for the military. Pff, no, are you crazy? And then the, the systemic issues that I was speaking of previously. Conservatives typically don't like taxes, which could be used to solve these systemic issues, you know, like impoverished neighborhoods, bringing more public housing or public funding to improve those neighborhoods or health care so that people can be more healthy in general or or funding education so that more people have access to higher levels of education for example that's not really usually liked and usually when conservatives rail against taxes they often frame it in a way that if taxes are raised they're going to be raised for everyone equally which usually is not the case like, when we speak about increasing taxing, we, like on the left, I say, we usually want to increase taxing on big companies and the rich because they can afford it. And not, you know, just working people. But they usually frame it this way. For example, the Republicans, now in the US, during the presidential election, they, they very often use this talking point that Democrats are going to raise your taxes. Democrats are, or Biden is going to raise your taxes, where Biden's plan was to raise taxes on people who earn $400,000 or more during a year, which is not most working people. Most working people don't earn that kind of salary. Like if you earn 400 k a year in the US, you're pretty well off. And that's where Joe Biden's tax plan was aiming at or is aiming at, but they use that fear to make it sound like they're coming for everyone's money, where it's like, no, they're just, they're just looking to tax the people who can be taxed and who can afford it, not, you know, poor people or working people, not cutting from essential services. So conservatives also often seem to favor giving corporations freedoms which, of course, just helps to perpetuate the current capitalist system that we live under. Because, you know, the more power that corporations have, or the more freedom that they have, the more power they have to exercise whatever they want to do. If you got popcorn ceilings, you ain't got to worry about Biden's tax plan. Yeah, that's exactly right, Clem. That's right. Uh, Trevor, so with the 400k plus tax increase, the issue isn't... It won't raise let's say my taxes, the issue is that the people who are making that 400k are usually pretty greedy and want to keep their money, so they will cut the pay of the workers or they will increase the cost of goods to make up difference in money loss, in my opinion. But that's not really a reason not to tax them. Do you see my point? Because if you, if, if you tax them more, you can fund more things like healthcare, public housing, welfare, all these things that are really, really important. And if they if they cut jobs, then, hey, that extra tax money, now you can help unemployed people. So I, I feel like that's not really a reason to not do it, because we fear that they're going to raise prices that, okay, well, let's not tax them. That's not really a good reason. I mean, they'll ra raise prices anyway if they want to. Nothing is stopping them from raising prices right now. If they, if they raise prices... Let's raise the minimum minimum wage then. Why don't you believe that that healthcare is not necessary? I think healthcare is an absolute necessity. Like healthcare should not be gated behind paywalls. 
everyone should have access to healthcare. Like there's no question about them. Or housing. Everyone should have housing. No question. This is where we get to the conservatives don't care about you part. Yes, I 100% agree with you, Atlas. Public health care and all kinds of social services are a must. Yes, they're the bedrock of our society. They make sure that people are happy and healthy and can contribute to society. Like, <laughs> like in the U.S. now, you literally have bread lines under capitalism. You literally now have bread lines because people in this pandemic don't have money to buy food because they can't work. So there are literal bread lines now, which people are always like, ah, under socialism, there's going to be bread lines. There's bread lines now under capitalism. Yeah, healthcare is super important for people in disability limbo mm -hmm. before they get their benefits. Yeah. For people who are unable to provide it for themselves, such as disabled or older people, then yes, there needs to be some type of socialized healthcare. But if you're able to work, I don't think the government should offer a helping hand like that. Why not? I, I, I don't understand. You're still not saying why they shouldn't do that. Why should not? Why should the government not offer a service to everyone? Because the problem here is that like disabled or let's count out like disabled old people or people with chronic illnesses, stuff like that. Like many American people right now, if they were to break their arm and have to go, have to go get like, or let's say leg, they break their leg and they have to go to the, am they have to be taken by an ambulance to the hospital. They can't afford that. That will bankrupt them. You should never have to think, can I call nine, can I call 911 to get an ambulance? Because if I call, it'll, it will ruin my, like my, <laughs> my household. That should never be a consideration. Ever. Never. And the problem with the current American system is that your healthcare being tied to your employment means that if you lose your job, there's a huge hit to you. Yeah, delivering a baby in, in the US costs like 15k. Europeans are like, what? It costs like what does it cost in Finland? It doesn't cost like much. The issue is there isn't that it shouldn't be so should be socialized then it should be regulated like everything else. You can't sell a gallon of gas for $100, so why can you charge? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree with that. But that that doesn't have anything to do with whether it's socialized or not. That's a t that's a totally different issue. I agree with that. That's what we have here in Europe. That's why insulin doesn't cost insane amounts here. Because our government has regulated it. Yes, but, but that's the pharmaceutical industry. That's, that's a different part of this thing. I'm talking about healthcare where you can go to a hospital or a doctor if you need to go. This should also include mental health care, which we need to fund way, way more. Like these systems, these working systems exist. Trevor, the US is one of the only countries in the world industrialized countries in the world that does not have socialized healthcare everywhere else in the industrialized world we have that and it works it's not perfect i'm not going to say it's perfect it has its problems but it's way better than not having that like if i'm like oh i need to go to the doctor because i have a rash that it has been bothering me i can go to the doctor and it doesn't it doesn't cost me that much, you know? And then drug prices are also regulated so that you can't charge insane amounts for something like insulin, which you need to live. Like if you have diabetes and you need insulin, it's a necessity for your life. You will die if you don't get that. Like that should not be left to private industries like insurance because they will, they will just hike up the pricing if there's no regulation. Healthcare shouldn't be dependent on money of the person. Yep, it should it should only care about if the person needs medical help or not. 100% agree. Yes. Because we all have different situations in life where we're like, okay, now I need medical care because something 
like uh, something's going on with my body. Like you don't you don't plan for your medical needs unless you go to like a regular checkup. But you don't plan for your medical needs because you can't plan for your medical needs 100% because something comes up. I mean like that's why it has to be there. It's 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 a safety net to help people to make sure that people don't suffer unnecessarily. It's a system that can exist and does exist, but in the US it doesn't. So stuff like, I don't see any good reason why healthcare should not be socialized. Like, I don't really see any good reason. Like, yes, some people will say, well, so, well, if it's done by the government, it's going to be inefficient or slow. And it's like, yeah, those those are definitely problems, but we need to look to solve those those inefficiencies and make it better. We shouldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We should see how we can improve on it. Like, yeah, like I live in Sweden right now. I've lived in Finland most of my life. Going to public healthcare is not always the best experience, but I can do it. I can go there. And usually the reason why public healthcare is inefficient is usually because of lack of funding. That's usually the reason. If there's long waiting lines, etc., etc., that's because they don't have enough money to hire enough people to take care of people. Usually that's the case. Which actually neatly brings me over to my example, because I'm talking about like, this is how I see that the way the conservatives espouse their values. Let, let's talk of a pr practical example. Let's look at the previous government of Finland, because that's where I'm from and that's what I know. So the previous government, which was in power from 2015 to 2019. It was a coalition between the center party, Keskusta, Free Finnish people, the National Coalition Party, Kokomus, Free Finns, and the True Finns, or I think they're not called just the Finns, which is better summarized. So a very right-leaning government. So the National Coalition Party, for those of you who don't know, is a is the is a right-wing party in Finland that is especially um, geared towards rich people and corporations. So they very heavily cater to lowering taxes of corporations, giving corporations freedoms, etc., etc. Uh, the the Finns, or as they were then called, the True Finns, are a right-wing nationalist party that don't like foreigners. And the center party is like center-right and is very much focused on agriculture and the more rural areas of Finland, to put it in very simple terms. So let's talk about some of the, some of the practical things that they did during this four-year this four-year period, or roughly four-year period. So one of the big things that they did was something called the Kilpailukyky Sopimus, or the Competitiveness Agreement. If I were to translate that very, very roughly, I don't know what it's called in English, that's like a literal translation. So this Competitiveness Agreement, it was, what it aimed to do was to uh, or actually what it did do, I should say, it froze all contract salaries for a year. So all, all like contracted salaries were frozen for a year. They couldn't raise them. And on average, they added 24 hours work per year to everyone with no additional compensation. So for me, for example, the way that played out was uh, actually, I don't think it happened in the in my previous job, but for my mom, uh, that meant like once a week she would have to do 15 minutes of more like more work, but there was no compensation for it. <clears throat> Public sector vacation compensation was cut by 30 percent, and employers' unemployment un unemployment and pension costs were cut, while these were raised for employees. So the point of this was basically to increase the competitiveness of the Finnish market and cut down, get some more money out of people. Now, yeah, Kiku was a thing. So as you can see, like this, 
is basically taking more, making making people work more and taking more money out of them. And it was be, it was very much marketed as like a, we all need to make sacrifices now because tough time in the economy. We have to you know we have to tighten the belt. Everyone has to make sacrifices, except the companies, of course. You know, they they didn't have to make really any sacrifices. <laughs> so here you can see this this trend that I was talking about in conservatism about about shifting responsibility to individuals and giving corporations free reigns or, and tax breaks. Exactly that happened with the Gilbalogogosovimus, which was widely disliked. Then we have the healthcare changes. It's called the Sota Uristus that they did or were or trying to do but it didn't it hasn't gone through yet it's still in the works from my understanding the idea was to move the responsibility of healthcare services from the municipalities which there are like i think over a hundred or even over 200 in finland to newly formed 18 big regions And they, what they claimed was it was to give people the choice to choose between the municipality service, a private company, or an organization service that they could get their health care from. And of course, that gives more power to corporations to come in to make more money out of health care. And this, it's still going on. It still hasn't gone through. It's been a huge burden. They're trying to push through, but it just hasn't been happening. And like, I don't, I don't want our health care to become more privatized. It's a bad thing. Healthcare should not be privatized. It should be a public thing. It's a it's a basic necessity that everyone needs, and there should be access and there should be good support for it. And one of the big things that they tried to do was fight what is called the gray market in Finnish, which means like avoid avoiding taxes. Avoiding taxes, basically, is was what's called the gray market in Finnish. Hey, Dioxin, any infrastructure should not be privatized. Agreed. Yes. Any infrastructural necessity like housing, healthcare, electricity, water, all of these things, I agree that they should not be privatized. But yes, to fight this gray economy, they, they cut resources from the police to investigate tax evasion, which is always, but well, that's an interesting way to fight this problem. They tried to push for a thing that would have allowed for companies that had dodged taxes by moving assets out of Finland to return them to Finland without facing any consequences. This was called the active repent model. Active katumus model or something like that. But this did not go through because there was huge pushback for it. Because obviously, if companies are dodging taxes, they should be punished for it because they're stealing because if i as an individual did what the companies did if i did the same thing as those companies did i would be in serious trouble i would go to jail for years and they were saying no but we need to let the companies come back and te- and for them to say that they're we we saw we and they won't do you good like no what the fuck are you on about again we are seeing this tendency of giving companies way more leeway than individual people. Like statism is good in that regard, not providing public services. Yes, I think so. They also tried to push for a registry, which would have given the possibility to hide the ownership of investments, but that also did not go through because of huge pushback. Again, like, not good, chief. Not good, chief. And then, one of the most hated things that the previous government did. Aktiivimalli. Or the active model, as it is known. It is a... It was a change to the unemployment benefit system. 
where you had to show that you were actively looking for a job and that you had a plan, etc., etc. Otherwise, you would lose your unemployment benefit. So you would have to go to an interview at the unemployment office every three months where you had to show how, you've been, how you had been looking for a job and what were your plans. And if you did not arrive to these meetings, you would lose your benefit for 15 days, which of course is devastating for someone who is unemployed. The point of this model was to increase employment and lower unemployment. That was like their aim. It was, it was in effect for two years, and then it was removed by our current government because it was, it was seen as a huge, huge waste. People did not like it. It, it put pressure and stress on unemployed people, which if you've, if you've never been unemployed, uh, not a, like you're probably not in the best of mental states when you're unemployed. So putting additional pressure on the unemployed is not really what we should be doing doesn't really help and the VATT Institute of Economic Research in Finland said that there's no evidence of the benefit of activating the unemployed but it's the best way to make unemployment statistics look nice that's very important so you could like this type of stuff is really good for making stats look nice so you can say like look at how much we're doing good with the unemployment well while actually the benefits are non-existent. And then some of the fun cuts that this government did was a 690 million euro cut to education. Because, you know, we have to make sacrifices, right? And I believe, I believe this, this government, when they were, uh, when there was the election, Sipila, who was the, the prime minister, was, it was Sipila, right? Sipila, who was the prime minister. One of his campaign points was that he would not cut from education. He took several pictures with, with students with like a sign that says basically that we promise not to cut from education. And that promise was very quickly forgotten. How, how would completely cutting off all the income of unemployed people even lower unemployment? Like, the idea, Atlas, there is that because you put that pressure on people, on the unemployed, like, that we're going to take away your money, that you basically force them into a job, any job. Is it a good job for them? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a good job. You have to just take a job. If, if, if it doesn't fit you, like, even if it doesn't make any sense, you just take a job. And then you can say, look, we've lowered unemployment. Huh? But you don't actually look at the the quality of the work that you did. You only look at the raw numbers, which is not the only thing that you can look at. But yeah, I hope that this could illustrate to you how conservatives typically tend to put a lot of pressure on individual by saying, you know, you have responsibilities and you have to make sacrifices, but then they will not give the same scrutiny to corporations, but rather give them more freedom and power to do whatever the hell they want while taking away from crucial infrastructures like healthcare and education. So I hope this helps to show you that, you know, conservatives don't really have your best interest in mind unless you're really rich uh, and you run a big company. Then, of course, then they do. But if you're a regular working person, they don't have your best interest in mind. They want to cut from you while giving to the rich. And I don't think that's fair. And I don't think that's just. We should not be cutting from our education, our healthcare, our fundamental services that everyone needs access to and good service from. They should not be locked away behind paywalls. These are things that everyone needs and deserves to have. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please do like and subscribe and if you have any questions comment down there i will gra gladly read them and respond to you also i stream on twitch every monday wednesday friday at 6 p.m central european time so come hang out with us then link is also down there and hey have a great one